Aloha and welcome everyone to the Fit to Fat to Fit Experience podcast. It's me, your host, Drew Manning. Thank you guys for tuning in today. Today, we have a special guest, Dr. Jim Stepani. He's a PhD. He's the leading authority on exercise science, sports nutrition, and supplementation. Over the past 15 plus years, Dr. Stepani has helped millions of people change their lives through science-based nutrition and supplement plans and expertly designed training programs. I've actually been following him for, for years, ever since I got into the fitness industry, because he was one of the leading authorities that um, I, I trusted because I knew he knew what he was talking about. Um, and you know, I've, I've definitely, um, admired his work and in, in the fitness industry. And so we dive into a lot of stuff talking about diet and exercise and supplementation, all the stuff that you would want to know how to build muscle, how to burn fat, um, plus busting a lot of myths out there as well. So it's a very interesting episode, especially if you're into health and fitness and diet and exercise and supplementation, this is the episode for you. Um, Dr. Jim is a, is a stand-up guy. He's great. He's definitely humble. Um, you can tell he knows what he's talking about and he's here to help and serve. And that's what I love about him. Um, before we jump into today's episode, uh, this episode is brought to you by Keon. Are you having trouble putting on muscle? You can't build muscle without essential amino acids, which are the building blocks of protein. You must get them from protein or supplements like Keon Aminos. It contains more essential amino acids and is absorbed and utilized easier and it's better at building muscle than just protein alone. It helps you recover better so you can bounce back and get back to working out faster. And this is why I'm such a huge fan of taking essential amino acids. Um, you know, the EAAs or essential amino acids are what's inside protein. It builds the muscle, healthy hair, skin, and nails. And Keon Aminos ensures that you're getting all the essential amino acids uh, from protein that your body needs. And I actually just had a podcast episode with the founder, and he talked about... Um, how much more potent the essential amino acids are versus eating protein alone. And um, so that's why, for me, I noticed a huge difference in my recovery, my ability to push harder. I use it as a fuel source. We actually talk about um, amino acids on this episode with Dr. Jim Stepani and the benefits of using essential amino acids as a fuel source to fuel you during your workouts and to help build some muscle. So especially as you age, as you get older, if you're getting older like I am, you definitely want, might want to look into supplementing with essential amino acids, not BCA, BCAAs, branch chain amino acids, but essential amino acids. And um, we get into the science of what that is. But if you're looking to save 20% on essential amino acids, just go to get Keon, that's get K-I-O-N.com forward slash Drew, and you'll get 20% off. So that's get Keon.com forward slash Drew. And you'll get 20% off these essential amino acids. They taste great, clean ingredients, and I think you'll really love them, um, especially if you are looking to build muscle and burn fat, which is pretty much everyone. So check it out. And with that being said, let's go hang out with Dr. Jim Stepani. All right, Dr. Jim, welcome to the show. How are you doing today, man? <laughs> awesome, dude. Pleasure. Pleasure being here. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, I know. It's my pleasure. I've been, like we were talking about before, I've been following you for a while and it was really cool to get an email from your team, uh, you know, wanted to come on the podcast. And so I, I jumped at the opportunity and just am super grateful to have you on, man. I've been following you for years. Um, the first question I kind of wanted to dive into is like, what age were you when your own personal fitness journey started and how did you get into health and fitness? Yeah, so I would probably say somewhere around 11, maybe even a little younger. Um, okay. And it was, it was through my, my dad. Okay. My dad had a, a gym set up in the basement, and um, I wanted to spend time hanging out with my dad. So, you know, at night he would get home from work. He'd go down and work out. And so, you know, I started following down the, following him downstairs to the basement and started working out. And then as I got more into it, he started, you know, building, you know, like a cable crossover, not, you know, I'm literally talking about like cables with pulleys and he would take either, uh, coffee cans back into the old coffee cans, <laughs> yeah. uh, for the cable crossover, fill them with cement. Mm. And then you'd put a bar through the can so that we could add weight to the, you know, to the can so that we'd have more weight. Same thing had we pulled down. He even made a leg press, literally wow. a leg <laughs> press, made mainly out of four by fours. Um, but he literally designed all this equipment, homemade equipment. So I had a pretty Dang. sweet setup growing up. Um, and then, you know, and my dad would bring home, you know, muscle and fitness magazines, all those back then it was muscle builder power, I believe it was called. Mm. And I would start reading 
you know, articles on muscle fiber type and, you know, like power development and, you know, rep ranges in the, in, you know, in the rep range continuum. And I'm like, whoa, there's a science here to building muscle. And I was, you know, I've always wanted to be, you know, when I was growing up as a kid, I was in the science and I wanted to be a doctor, you know, and one of those doctor kits, mm-hmm. that was the big thing. But then I realized, you know, I don't want to just work with regular people. I want to work with getting people bigger and stronger and faster, you know? And so, you know, I literally fantasize that one day I would work for those magazines and actually be the science guy writing those magazines. And, you know, I continued when I got my PhD, did my postdoc at Yale School of Medicine, and then started writing articles for the magazines based on my research and just literally cold called them through email and sent them my articles. They loved them and literally offered me a job. Um, I know this is getting a little uh, beyond what you're at. <laughs> you're good. You're good. I love it. We're here for all of it. We're not here your whole story. You know, so. I, I recall, I mean, I was at Yale School of Medicine. I was an award-winning scientist with a career, wow. you know, in, in the way that exercise and nutrition affects genes in, in the muscle mm-hmm. tissue. And when I told my lab I was leaving to go work for a bunch of muscle magazines, they were like literally like floored. They were like, what are you, what are you doing? Are you, are are you okay? Do you, you know, like you've got a career here in science and you're going to throw it away and go work for a bunch of muscle magazines. And I'm like, look, the the real reason I'm in the science is because I wanted to learn how to make my own body bigger and stronger and faster. Yeah. Um, So this is my calling, you know, and, you know, and everybody was, you know, I've yeah. never looked back. I've never been happier. And, uh, you know, it's those, those moments in your life where you make those changes and you take a risk that, you know, hopefully pay off in this case, you know, it paid off, uh, amazing. Yeah. I love what I do. Yeah, no. And you've been in the game for so long and like, it, it's Too interesting. Cause <laughs> yes. <there's>, yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I think I have a lot of respect for you. I think people do now because you're a well-known name in this industry and there aren't a lot of people who combine the brains and the brawn who do what you do. It's a very small world of like scientists, but also bodybuilder type that knows the science behind it. And that's kind of what I think intrigued me to start following you was like, okay, this guy's got his PhD. He knows what he's talking about versus just your average gym guy that can talk the talk, but sure. doesn't really have a deep understanding of the science. And that's, I think what makes you so unique in this, in this industry is there's not too many people with your background. And that's kind of why I wanted to have you on because you bring something new and different to the table and you have the authority there. I'll, I'll say that like a hundred percent because I don't pretend to have like the authority uh, like that, that you have, especially with, with uh, you being a scientist. So I, I love that. I let that you bring that to the table. Um, I'm, well, thank I'm you. I will say, you know, while, while I may have authority at the same time, you know, we know so little and we're learning every day. And, you know, and, you know, that's the, you know, when I started with the magazines, we used to tell people don't drink casein protein around workouts. It's too slow, you know? Yeah. And yeah. that's the, all the scientists. Oh, it, this isn't bro science. These are all the scientists going, you know, whey protein. It's fast. It gets to the yeah. muscle. And then Bob Wolf's lab down in Galveston, Texas, um, published some research showing that when you have a slower digesting protein, with the fast digesting way, it actually not only spikes that muscle protein synthesis after workout, but it elongates the time it spends. And so, you know, we had to go and change what the recommendations were that we were giving because the new science shows, and that's what I love about science and just the human body. You know what I mean? And like, you know, you people tell you, this is how you build muscle. And I say, to anybody saying this is how you build muscle BS. We don't really know. You know what I mean? Like, sure. I can show you a million ways to increase muscle protein synthesis, but you know, then we have micro RNA, our micro RNAs that come along and eat up what was synthesized. So there's so much regulation in the body that we're, we're literally just, just beginning to learn how muscle grows. That right there, it, it means a lot because I think there's a lot of like pretending out there of like, we know exactly, this is exactly how it works. And, and for someone like you to say that we don't really know is kind of where like partials are the (laughs) secret to innocence, you know, like there are no secrets. It's hard work and consistency. You know what I mean? Like Dorian Yates trained with one set. Arnold Schwarzenegger did 30 sets. They both were amazing. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's yeah. like yeah. one of my models is everything works. Nothing works forever. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's a really great saying. Everything works. Nothing works forever. 
Um, with you being in the industry for so long, you miss it. You mentioned casein protein. I was going to ask you this question. What have you seen change or evolve over the years that you personally have changed your mind on based on the newer research and newer science? So, so casein is the one example. What are some other things that maybe was something that we used to believe 20, 30 years ago? Now we're coming to find out that, you know, it doesn't work that way or. I'd say know, fasting cardio is one of the. Okay. One of the other areas. Cause a lot you know, of people still do that. If, of course. And, you know, yeah. and, and, and there's a few caveats here, let me mention. So sure. if you look at the research, if you can, we're going back like 20 years now, right. And you sure. saw the research, right. And it's a lot of acute studies and they're looking at, oh, you know, what, what fuel gets used during a workout, right? Well, sure. If you're fasted, you're going to burn more fat as a fuel, no doubt about it. Right. Mm -hmm. However, does that work to increase fat loss faster than if you weren't doing the fasted cardio. And I would say no, if you look at the research now, because we now know what happens is if what you're burning during your workout is what you're going to conserve after the workout is over, right? So if you burn fat during your workout, what are you going to burn after? during the recovery, right? We've got EPOC, right? Excess post oxygen consumption. That's going to require calories. If you are burning mainly fat during that workout, then you're going to burn mainly carbohydrates during your EPOC so that you have more fat to rely on during the next workout. However, if you did say high intensity interval training workout where you're burning almost no fat because it's so yeah. intense, right? What are you going to burn after? You're going to, you're in, during epoch, you're going to burn the carbohydrates during the workout. You're going to burn the fat after. And so when you break down your day, how much time do you spend working out an hour, maybe two max for, you yeah, know, some elite most people. athletes? Well, there's 24 hours in a day. So would you rather maximize the amount of fat you're burning in that one or two hours or the other 22? Um, and, and, and so I would say no. You know, that you really, and high, look, we know that high intensity interval training works well for fat loss. And again, if you don't like high intensity interval training, that's fine. I'm not saying that's the only way you can lose body fat. You can certainly lose body fat with steady state cardio. We know, we know that, but yeah. do you want to spend 60 minutes a day doing cardio or do you want to spend 15 to 20 minutes um, yep. and getting an equivalent, you know, amount of fat loss? And so I would say fasted cardio is one of them now. If you're a professional bodybuilder or physique athlete and yeah. you're trying to get the last two pounds of body fat off, maybe then, maybe then maximizing the fat burning during the workout might help to get rid of that, those stubborn areas. Yeah. But again, it's, it's sort of a maybe, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and then I, the other thing is there's people saying now with intermittent fasting, uh, sorry, with, with fasted exercise is that you get a bigger uh post exercise boost in muscle protein synthesis and it's like well yeah you were fasted like <laughs> your, your muscle breakdown was ramped up so now you have to you know you have to ramp up muscle protein synthesis just to get back to baseline from what you lost during all that exercise without any you know any calories yeah yeah, that makes sense. I think that's a, a great topic because I think a lot of people are, are curious about that. And, you know, I think sometimes we get stuck in, in these ways of like, this is what's always worked for me. And then not getting out of that mindset of like, yes. well, this is what all the guys from back in the day have done. And, um, you know, I, there's some people get stuck in their ways. <laughs> and they Agreed. Kind of just Agreed. And, their... and, and, and I'll argue, too, that if it, something works for you, then. That's what yeah. I tell people. Like they'll say, well, you, you mentioned blah, blah, blah. But I found that when I actually do that, that it actually, and I'm like, then, then stick yes. to what you're doing. You know what I mean? Yes. Like every human body is individualized. Your biochemistry is different. Your biomechanics are different. So yes, there's some science that should apply to most people, but there's certain, yeah. for certain people, if what's working for you is working for you, yeah. stick with it, you know? Uh, yeah, and and that's what I love about it. It's sensible. 
Yeah, 100%. And I think there's always going to be those outliers that exist. And this is kind of why I love what you said. Like, we don't really know for every single individual human out there, you know, not everyone's body works the same. We can do studies and based on science, we can kind of point like, hey, based on science, this is kind of what we're finding out um, in these randomized controlled trials. But in the real world, sometimes, yeah, there are some things that work for other people that don't work for for others. And I think it's, that's why it's so important to do your own experimentation. Precisely. And the other thing I'll say is about studies is as a scientist who's, you know, been involved in, in many studies, (laughs) um, studies are not, you know, we put these studies up on a pedestal and go, Oh, well, there was a study that showed and it's like, okay, well, let's look at the subject population. Oh, they were beginners. It's like, well, (laughs) we know, you know, beginners are completely, you know, completely different um, than somebody who's trained. And, you know, yes. I'm talking to people, not that I'm not for anybody who's a beginner, but most of the people that are following me, most of the advice that I'm giving is for people who are trained. So what was yep. the subject population and what was the workout? A lot of times these workouts that they'll, they'll tell you like, Oh, we found that resting three minutes versus whatever, not. Yeah. And then you look at the workout and it's like they did three sets of bench press followed by three sets of pull down, followed by three sets of curls, followed by three sets. And like, that's not a workout. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that's not really a workout. I'm sure it was a workout for them, but yeah, that is not the type of workout that my, the people who are following me are doing. So mm-hmm. does it really apply? Yeah. I, I love that. Is there anything else that comes to mind that maybe you've personally changed your mind on over the years based on, newer science or newer research? I mean, there's so many, so yeah. many things. It's uh, maybe intermittent fasting again on the fasting, you know, and what's interesting yeah. is I did, when I was at Yale school of medicine, we were doing fast. We were studying intermittent fasting. We were looking at what happens when you refeed humans and, and rats, either protein after the fast or high carb and looking at the genes and activity there. And despite being involved in that research, when intermittent fasting first really became, was popularized, I, I really wasn't that hot on it, mainly because yep. you can't build muscle that way. You can, for fat loss, yes. Uh, yeah. It increases, what we found was uncoupling proteins, which literally poke mm-hmm. holes in your mitochondria. So you're basically burning more calories to get the same amount of ATP. When you mm-hmm. do intermittent fasting, that's one of the main reasons that it works. It also ramps up other enzymes that are involved uh, in, in, in fat and carb, uh, mm-hmm. metabolism. Um, but I wasn't really hot on it as, as a diet strategy because of the long periods where you're getting such excessive muscle protein breakdown, at least yeah. for bodybuilders. But I will yeah. say as far as health wise and fat loss goes, I really do think intermittent fasting, if you're the type of person that can, that likes that, do you know what I mean? Like, and again, like there's no one way to no one nutrition plan. It's like, I, I like to say, find what you can tolerate and what works for you. Um, yeah. But for fat loss in, in health on intermittent fasting, yes. For muscle building, you, you yeah. find one Mr. Lim- and again, I know they're on tons of, <laughs> of, of drugs, but it, regardless if intermittent fasting worked that well for muscle building, they'd all be intermittent fasting. There's not a single Mr. Olympia competitor who would go two hours without a meal, let alone 16 hours. You know what I mean? True. Yeah. That's a really good point. I'm glad you brought that up. Intermittent fasting is a, is a hot topic for sure. And I think there's a, yeah, it depends on what your goals are and it's all and relative. It works, it works well for those people that the the way I explain it is it, sure you could do maybe like a low carb or carb cycling diet, but then all day long you're going, wow, I really could go for some rice right now, but <laughs> you know, okay, yeah. maybe I'll have some rice now. And then at dinner, I won't have as the pasta that I was going to have. And so you're always like, you're playing these mind games and you're always cognizant of, okay, maybe if I have this now, Whereas with intermittent fasting, it's like, geez, I really want to, nope, it's not time to eat anything yet. It's just a yes or no. And so a lot, for a lot of people, it sort of takes, you know, it, it controls them easier because it's just like, oh, you're standing at Starbucks, you're getting a black coffee because you're in your, and you're looking at the cupcakes and you're going, wow, I could really use one. But instead of trying to go, oh, if I eat one of those cupcakes now, I'll eat fewer carbs at dinner. It's just like, no. 
it's it's not time and it makes it so much easier for a lot of people but again yeah. it depends on your mindset 100 percent. um <clears throat> switching gears a little bit you're 56 years old right in your yes. 50s okay so how have you do you have you have have you changed your um routine you know now that you're 56 for have you sure had you know is yeah, yeah. maybe so dive into I, that a little bit yeah so i would say for anybody who's getting older i think mobility is so critical yeah as you get older i mean it's um, don't get me wrong mobility is critical at any age but at 56 i'm not going to build as much muscle as i could have when i was 26 okay sure. so there's no point in me coming in here in in following an Arnold style bodybuilding routine where I'm, you know, doing just chat or Jay Cutler. Or I'm coming in and blasting my chest one day in biceps uh, another. I'm not saying that I never do that, but yeah, I, I, my routine is more well-rounded as, as yeah. I get older, you know, I, I want to maintain that mobility, right. It, you know, the, the, first thing that goes is your mobility. If you can't get down on the floor and get something under your bed when you're 56, you've got a problem. And so I make, I, I try to do a lot of mobility, whether it's, you know, yoga and stretching and, and whatnot. And then also the cardio aspect. I have, a, I have a cardiomyopathy I had from a virus I got as a kid. So I have a compromised mm. heart. So as I get older, you know, when I was in my twenties and thirties, it wasn't really that much of an issue as I get older. Right. And the heart's yeah. been beating for 56 years now it, it's become more of an issue and so i focus more on the cardio and the mobility and just well-rounded fitness yeah and are you okay with it like do you sacrifice a little bit of muscle mass because of that and you're okay with that now that you're older you want to because you want to feel good yeah, is that I mean, look, a compromise? Look, right sarcopenia is real it mm -hmm. it, it un unless okay unless i'm you know, a bodybuilder who's using drugs and, yeah. you know, and you've seen plenty of bodybuilders in their fifties who look amazing. Absolutely. You wouldn't yeah. even be able to tell if you saw them from the head down, you would never guess that they were in their fifties. You would never guess that they were any older than somebody in their thirties, maybe, right. Maybe sure. skin quality or whatnot, but you can look pretty amazing as long as you're keeping your testosterone up for someone like me. And I'm a natural mm -hmm. athlete. Uh, you know, my muscles are, 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 they get shorter. They're getting, there's no, no matter how much exercise I do as a natural athlete, I'm still going to lose some muscle mass as I get older, sure. right? That there's no, mm -hmm. it's preventing is, it's preventing is, you know, or, or limiting how much muscle at this point, but I'm going to lose muscle regardless. So that sure. so my point is why am I'm, why am I killing myself to build muscle when it's, you know, it's, it's, it's tough at this age. So yeah. look, I'm fine with losing some muscle. Obviously I want to maintain as much as I can to, to when I'm on videos and trying to teach people, they can trust, Oh, this guy does actually have some biceps. So maybe I'll listen <laughs> to him. You know, that's important, but you know, it's really more about having that full well-rounded routine. Uh, and like, it's, you know, I'm going to lose the muscle regardless of how hard I'm training uh, yeah. and whether I'm focusing on, on building muscle or not. Yeah. I think for me, you know, I'm 43, but as, as I've gotten older, you do get wiser. You do realize like, Hey, maybe there's more to life than just having big biceps, um, right. <laughs> which is cool. It gives you that kind of credibility on the street when people are like, Oh, look at him. But you know, when you have kids, your kids don't care what your muscles look like, or as you get older, they, you realize there's more important things in this life. Um, and, and it doesn't mean you stop working out and just let your body go, but it's not this thing. I think back in the day, this is just me speaking, but like, I, th I feel like I wanted the body to have that validation because it kind of filled this void temporarily. And if yep. I'm just being honest, I think a lot of people do that. If, if I have this body, people are going to treat me this way and it makes me feel better about myself um, temporarily, I would say. But then as you get older, at least for me, you know, especially having done this fit to fat to fit experiment where I purposely became obese. Yeah, I love it. I love it. <laughs> which love was humbling. <laughs> it taught me a lot. <laughs> And I don't think I would ever, ever do it again, but I can say I learned a lot of valuable lessons from it. I just realized that, you know, I, uh, we all have more to offer this world than just what our body fat percentage yeah, and, is. And, and nobody really cares to be, Yes, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, <laughs> you know, like I said, I have like, you know, I have kids in their twenties and, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just like, you know, the, you know, oh, we're going out to dinner and it's like an hour later, you know, one of my daughters is ready to go to dinner and it's just like, 
you know, like you don't want to tell them this, but it's like nobody really cares what your hair. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know what I mean? Like nobody cares how big your biceps are. Um, yeah, I'm. You know, if you're a competitive bodybuilder, sure. But in, yeah. in every day, do you know what I'm saying? As long as you're, you know, sure. I think that people respect it. Respect how you look when you're fit. You know what I'm saying? It shows that, you know, you're dedicated, you're, you're no stranger to hard work, but whether your biceps are 16 or 18 or 20, they're, do you know what I mean? Yeah. To the general population, they, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're kind of talking to like the 20 year old dudes out there that like think it matters. Right. right. And th that was us back then. Cause we did think it mattered probably back when we were younger, but, uh, you know, yeah, I, and you, know, you, know, I mean, at that age, you're, you're programmed to be, you know, a little more self focused yeah you know what i'm saying sure. whereas at our age once you <laughs> once you have once you have kids it's it's a yeah. whole different world you realize you're not the, you're not the most important person <laughs> <laughs> exactly you have to give a lot of yourself to you know other things yeah that and you it's, don't want it's to. an important perspective to have i think amen I'm, I'm glad that you talked about that because i think that's really important um getting back into some topics i want to talk to you about peptides are a huge thing these days and i just curious to know your thoughts as as a doctor what do, do peptides work? Are they worth the money? Are there some of them overhyped? Are some of them dangerous? Um, you know, I'm currently taking some. Um, I'm very open and honest about like what I put in my body to people, um, like PPC 157, Cerebrellin. Mm -hmm. yep. Those are the two that I'm taking. And I'm just curious to know, like, what would you, uh, what are your thoughts? Yeah, on those peptides? two, I'm, I'm, I believe are. I think if you look at the research and the anecdotal mm -hmm. reports, they're they're effective. My personal, my personal take is. Yeah, on any on any, and this is the same with like back when pro hormones were big. People that the same thing, SARMs. Okay, SARMs. SARMs. Yep. I have the same response for pro hormone SARMs and peptides. Per, okay. Personally, okay. Sure. This is this is just personal. Is is like we we know so little that I don't want to be the guinea pig, or I don't want to make anybody else the guinea pig mm -hmm. on them. And so I'm not I'm not a person who who mentions peptides really talks about them even though i believe that there's some that are very beneficial safe yeah. right safe and effective which is critical for me yes. and that's you know this my supplement line is all about that it's finding the ingredients that not only have been shown to be effective in the research but are, sh are shown to be safe in the long run in, in years. Important. and so with peptides I, I i don't know we just don't know enough yet on certain ones and so yeah um so for me, I, like I said, I, I, not that I don't believe in, you know, certain ones could be effective, but I don't really want to promote them because we sure. don't quite know yet. And I don't want to yeah. make somebody else the guinea pig. I, I agree with what you said. I remember that this brings up a funny memory when I was in college back in the day, my football coach creatine was the big thing back then. And he's like, you yeah. know what, this hasn't been around long enough. I wouldn't experiment with it. And I remember that. And I'm like, you know, he's got a good point. Uh, but this is back in like the, you know, what's early 90s. 90s or, yeah. Yeah. But anyways, you know, I, creatine is one of those things I think has been proven to be safe and effective for a lot yes. of people. But but who knows with peptides? And that's the thing. Like, for example, let's let's dive into like Ozempic or this semaglutide or semaglutide, which is the weight loss stuff that people are using these days. And that that kind of stuff does concern me. I do know people are taking it. I've heard of side effects and stuff like that. Is there, is there a safe way of taking these things? <laughs> Cause so many people are doing it. They're going to do it anyways. Like the people that are really desperate, you know, there are people that are going to get lap band surgeries. Sure. Um, I'm just curious to know, like if you know people personally that take it and what, what, what they have I, said I about it. I do not know anyone personally who takes it. Um, okay. Same here. And um, in my opinion, again, is it's, mm -hmm. you know, my opinion is based on not just being a scientist, but on somebody like you who knows, as you know, you can lose the weight. Like it yeah. is, it is possible. Do you know what I mean? Like, yep. you, you know, people complain, well, you know, it's my genetics. I've always been heavy or I've been this, I have this medical condition. And sure, those are some limiting factors, but I still believe that if you truly wanted to lose the weight, you can make it happen without using a drug. Yeah. 
you know, I, and, and, yeah. and, and, uh, you know, that's what we, you and I, that's what we do yeah. in this industry is we, you know, we help people make those changes, reach their goals in a, in a safe, in a safe way. And, you know, we know, we've seen thousands and thousands of, of people do it. So, you know, I'm, I'm definitely against using Ozempic unless again, like just for certain populations, maybe they're so obese that they can't, they can't exercise yet. It, sure. know, sort of to start the fat loss, sort of kick it off and then get them going. But yeah, um, I'm not, I'm not one of those, those guys. It's like, Oh yeah, try Ozempic. <laughs> yeah, no, I totally, I totally get it. I think the the hard part is we live in a society that's like, in, so focused on instant gratification. Yeah. We want results now. We can't wait till tomorrow. We can't wait like for the, the two, three year process that it, it really does take. If you change your mindset, you change your habits, uh, you basically change, you need to change your identity. That's what's hard for people is they're, yes. they don't know how to change their identity. Even if they will power their way out of a, you know, through a diet and, and lose some weight, like biggest loser, you see people gain the weight back of a large yeah. percentage yep. of people, right? Because I think it has to do with their mindset and their identity that they don't really know those tools, how to change that. Um, and I think that's kind of what I like to focus on is the mindset aspect of it. Because that's what I learned from doing the experiment was I could give someone the best meal plans and w workouts to do and supplements. But if they can't f conquer their own mind, it's just going to be another diet. And so I think that's what we're up against. This is like these quick fixes that, you know, society is trying to create because that's, you know, it makes a lot of money. And people are like, they want that. They want that option. They want just the quick pill. Or the injection. Yeah, they want to. They want to look good for their wedding or for their vacation yes. in the Bahamas. Or, do you know what I'm saying? They're not. They're they're not thinking long term. Yeah, 100%. you know, which is what I say about keto. People ask me all the time, "Well, what do you think about keto?" I'm like, mm. "It's great. It'll you lose yeah. you lose plenty of body fat, but eventually you're going to stop losing body fat." And so, mm -hmm. in my world. I'm trying to get people not just to lose 20 pounds or lose their belly. I'm they they want to, they want abs. They want to compete. They want to, yeah. you know what I mean? They want to be shredded. So yeah. if you're going to start with a keto diet and have no carbs at the very mm -hmm. start of your, where are you going to go? At, you know what I mean? It's, it's a, it's a continual yeah. process and you have yeah. to really think long term. Um, and like I said, keto works great, particularly if you want to drop, 20 pounds in six weeks for a wedding, but eventually you're going to, you're, you're going to bottom out you're going to stop losing the body fat. And then what do you, what do you do? You've gotten all your carbs are gone, but now you're, yeah. you're going to eat less protein, less fat. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, you really have to think long term, Um, and that's changing, like you said, almost your personality or who you are, you know? Yeah. And that's kind of, I think what, requ what's required to make it a long term lifestyle change. Um, for, yeah, for, for people, some people that's, it happens. That's, that's hard you know work, I mean? man. For some people, you know, yeah. I do ch I do three challenge main challenges every okay. year. I have the New Year's challenge. It kicks off in January. I have a summer shred challenge, and then I have a holiday shred challenge, which is right before the holidays. Yeah. And you know, a, a lot of those people that make the biggest transformation, it it does it it sort of helps them make that next step and continue doing it. But it, but again, it's the person. There's plenty of people that then I see them all the time. They looked amazing. They were one of the runner ups in the previous challenge. And then two challenges later, it's back. Their before photo looks the same as their other before photo. And I'm just like, what happened? You know what I mean? <laughs> and like you said, like it's yeah. the, it's that individual you, you, you know, like we can help with the psychology, but yeah. it's really the person that really needs to make that, that change in their mindset. Yeah. And that's the type of tools I like to help people with is it, it, like, I love giving people obviously meal plans and diet advice and workout and supplements and things like that. Like, right. That's part of the process, but the tools on the mental and emotional side to shift their mindset, shift their perception. And that's kind of, I mean, that's with the heart that in my opinion, that's way harder work than it is to do like a yes. challenge and lose some weight. You'll, like a lot of people can do that, but to completely change your identity, to become the person that looks forward to you know training and eating healthy and like that shift in mindset right there is 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 goal that's kind of the goal for people is to shift that mindset and look at training and diet not as a chore or a punishment but as oh this is actually a way i show up for myself like this is a kind of an act of self-love if you will 
of like giving myself the love of doing hard things now that bring long-term fulfillment and change in the long run. Like you said, like yes. thinking more long-term. And I think that's, that's kind of the hard part for people is they're, they're not quite there yet. They don't have the tools in, in the fitness industry. We give people tools on like, here's how to train your bicep more effectively and, right. and get the, the pump. Right. And that's cool. But there's not a lot of tools on, Hey, here's how to overcome emotional eating. Here's how to overcome self-sabotage. You know, here's, how to overcome your childhood trauma, right? Like yeah, <laughs> that kind of yeah, stuff yeah. factors into people's psychological journey. And that's where people get stuck because they'll do the diet for three weeks, four weeks, you know, whatever. But then boom, something triggers them. And then they go back to their old thought patterns and they reach for the alcohol, or the, the cake or ice cream, yeah, whatever. It's the easiest is. thing. It's what they know best, you know? 100%. And that's kind of where the hard work is <laughs> in helping people. Cause it's not like, Hey, just do this diet and that'll just do keto. And then all your problems will go away. <laughs> yes, yes. And then and once you lose those 30 pounds, you'll be a whole new person and everybody will treat you differently. You'll feel differently. And it's just like, hundred mm, percent. Sure. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. But it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't fill that void in the long term. Like I know so many people that have lost the weight, just like in your challenges, they probably feel great. They get a lot of praise, but then, you know, that goes away eventually. Yes, and yes. then it's like, well, who am I goes now? Away. Their, yeah. you know, their old life is back and now they're trying to maintain this new body in their old yeah. life. And yeah, just, you know, like you need to change your life. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple of books I'd love to recommend to people. Atomic Habits is a really good one. If people want to learn how to like shift their mindset, I highly, highly recommend that book. Um, uh, there's another one that I was thinking of, but that, that's that's probably like a really good one to start with for, for a lot of people out there. I don't know yeah. You know, like you book. said, it's the, la it's the thing that's most lacking, I think, in the fitness industry, but yeah, kind of like how bodies are individualized, biochemistry and biomechanics you know, yeah. like your trauma and what's going to work for you. It's so, yeah. so, so dependent on that person. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. sure. We could give, you know, some, some tips and things that will help yeah. the majority of people, but it won't necessarily help everyone. Unfortunately. Yeah. <clears throat> One of the things that I want to talk to you about is, is this industry that we're in, especially with social media nowadays and how, you know, we talked about everyone is an influencer now and there's so much content out there. I can totally see it to from your average person's perspective of like, dude, this is so overwhelming. Yeah, like, like red meat's good, so red meat's bad. Yes. Cetos are good, Cetos are bad. Like, what is your take on like all this? I think it's an overload of information, and we're kind of like splitting hairs with like people are like, oh, well, do I eat red meat? Do I eat keto? Do I do vegan? Do I like like seed oils are bad? Cold water is bad now. Like, is it? <laughs> right. It's getting it's getting to the point where like everything is bad and like we're, we're kind of like scaring people i think the large majority of the population away from like i don't even know what to do anymore like what do yeah, you they, what is your they, take on all yeah that? they're so confused that they just kind of give up yeah yeah because you, know, you see and, one content creator creating this and based off this study and then they take that study and kind of twist it a certain way and then there's other people over here in this camp it's almost like religions fighting <laughs> over which yes, one's the it, right religion it, it really it really is. And it's kind of scary. And it's just, it's the, we were talking before we came on about how it's evolved, mm -hmm. you know, and just the way people gain, get information, you know, it used to be, you'd get your newspaper, right. Yep. Or <laughs> for fitness, you would go buy yeah. a fitness magazine, right. That's, yep. that's the way you learned how to do a bench press, how to create a chest workout, what kind of cardio, you know, a nutrition plan you read, you had to read, you know, and then the internet came along and people would, go to a website, bodybuilding.com or whatever yeah. it was back then, right? And get their information. And it was paced, if you will, like people mm. paced how they got their information. They have a question, right? Hmm. Yep. What kind of cardio should I do? Oh, let me look it up. I go to, right yeah. now. It's like you pick up your phone, you go to Instagram or, and then boom, you're just like some guys going, don't eat seed oil. And then you, fl and then the next one's going, you know, intermittent fasting and then the next one's going you know keto and and it's just like you're just bombarded yeah. with information and you know like you were saying it it, it, it people can't even focus and yeah. it's you know created a lot of you know like adhd i i think you you can I even agree. see in like you know my 11 year old you know we used to yeah. watch movies on a friday night now He's so used to that quick hit of YouTube, you know, you get 
Yeah. Like you said, instant gratification or instant information yeah. in, these vid- in these quick videos that he can no longer sit for an entire storyline. <laughs> he gets bored from the Dude. movie, you know, because it's not delivering that quick yeah. light in, of information. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, it's it's I good in, in, in a sense that you can find all this information about whatever topic you want. It's easily accessible, but how do you vet it? You know, like yeah. for the average person, you know, like yeah. it just makes it so, so confusing. It It is. And I, I can relate to you that my 12 year old, same thing. Like, Hey, like we used to watch movies. Hey, it's movie night. And then now it's like, I don't, she's like, I don't like movies. Like, yeah. I can't, you know, sit still. I'm like, it's man, true. this is what, <laughs> like, it's so fun. But now you like, we can't even do that. So I totally, can can feel you there that's 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 a hard one for sure and it, it is an overload of information so like let, let's talk about specifics like for example like uh, do you follow any kind of like nutritional kind of uh dogma if you will or are you just kind of more so like hey protein fats carbs here's kind of like your buckets and like you stay in these ranges most likely or do you kind of like hey i kind of lean more towards clean eating or paleo or what what is your take on nutrition how how do you look at it personally so <clears throat> I'm a person who doesn't like to limit people, you know, like I'm not a person that's going to say, Oh, you like donuts? Well, obviously donuts are high carb and high fat. So you can't ever have a donut if you want to have abs, you know? Um, I'm about working, working that in, you know, whatever the fruit is, it's got it, you know? So, so if you're a person who, look, you can't cut the, the donut habit, then maybe you're in the fasting is better for you because mm. you can be a little more loose on an intermittent yeah. fasting diet than you can if you're counting your carbohydrates, right? You sure. can be a little more loose. So it's really finding what works for that person. Now, I will say, if, you're, if you come to me and your goal is to build muscle, I'll, first thing I'll tell you is how much protein, are you eating a gram of protein per pound of body weight, right? So that would be one of the things I'd like to get them to. If they're a male, I'd like to get them at about a half a gram of of fat per pound of body weight, which Mm -hmm. is gonna be critical for testosterone production, uh, et cetera. So, you know, some of those um, I follow, but I'm very, very, you know, flexible when it comes to nutrition strategies. Like I said, some people are better with an intermittent fasting plan. Some people are better with a, you know, flexible carbohydrate, uh, diet. So, and, you know, and, and it's really finding what that person is going to use and, and consistently use without constantly feeling like they're on a diet. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that's perfect advice. And that's kind of where I've landed as well over the years. I used to be strict keto and more like clean eating and like paleo, uh, which I, I do tend to gravitate towards healthier foods like that. Sure. Like, of course. Yeah. Uh, obviously. Food obviously. Food range. Yes. Yeah. Like quality, but there are people out there that I will say struggle with budget and like, I totally get it. Like we, our society makes the the healthy grass fed, organic free range food so much more expensive. You got to like pay extra for that stuff. And I, I, I get it. You can't even find it. <laughs> it's so, it's so you true. Know? Yeah. You, you go to middle America, you can't find those foods that are available that you would probably you have in LA. <laughs> yeah. And, and right. worldwide, you know, I mean, I've, I, you know, I, like you said, we've been doing this for a while and through the magazines and, and social media and the websites, you know, I reach, you know, I have a lot of fans in India. Right. And so, mm-hmm. um, one of the, one of my colleagues who lives in India is like, you know, you need to come out here and just see how people shop and what they eat, how they buy their supplements. And I traveled to India and, you know, you, you can't go in a store and just buy yogurt or cottage cheese in, in, yeah. in India. And so, you know, it's a completely, you know, it's a different world and what people have available to them. And I think that's one of the things that, that we forget. I live in LA, so yeah. you can find grass fed, organic, you name, you know, yeah. around every corner that, that might not be the same in, you know, Cincinnati in a certain, you know, area. Um, you won't be able to find those food choices, you know, or those, you know, you can go to a restaurant almost anywhere and, and, and get a low carb meal. They'll, they'll adjust it for you. That, that's not at every restaurant or in every city. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, going back to your what you're saying, it sounds like the most important thing is protein. Like when it comes to, you know, changing your body composition, whether you fuel yourself with carbs or fats, like you can, you know, depending on the person, if they like donuts or if they want to go keto, it sounds like protein is the number one thing. Like aiming would, for I, one gram. Yeah, I would say in like what my, the, you know, it. I wouldn't say it's the, only, you know, like you said, not – but step one would be what is your protein if that if depending on your goal and and again even if your goal is is fat loss mm-hmm. increasing your protein a bit more you don't have to go up to one gram if you're not if muscle growth and strength isn't your goal you're it's sure. really just fat loss but increasing your protein is probably going to help you with fat loss yeah I, I agree what do you like what do you say when people are worried about their kidneys or they hear about high protein diets yeah, like we said, there's a lot of confusing information. Just your take yeah. On well, it. I, you know, I yeah. remind people that that's your kidney's job. Mm-hmm. Is <laughs> that's what it does? Like, yeah, it's not like it's not stressing the kidneys uh, when you're you know breaking down extra protein. That that's what it does. And you know, the only the only research that shows there's an issue uh, with the kidneys and protein is with those who have compromised kidney function. You know, mm-hmm. and so what yeah. percentage of the population? That's a very small percentage of the population anyone with a healthy kidney which is 99 percent of the people watching yep. uh this or are there's there's no there's no issue no okay issue. um you mentioned like whey protein casein protein um what is your recommendation on protein supplementation for people is it like is collagen is that bs is that ideal as well like what there's different types of there's whey there's you know casein there's collagen Let's talk about those and then maybe even beef protein isolate. Like I've, I've started taking that recently. I kind of lactose sensitive, even with whey protein isolate, I've noticed. And I've switched over to beef protein isolate and I, I really enjoy that. What's your take on like protein supplementation? And Okay, you know, so let's talk idea? about beef protein. Okay. So the problem with beef protein is it's not beef. Mm. It, that's basically collagen. Okay. So you're not taking a steak and grinding it up into a powder. <laughs> Okay. Right. They're literally, they're using the joints and the, it's yeah. Look at the amino acids on there and you'll see high proline, right. If they list them, it'll be lower in the branch chain amino acids, unless they're fortifying it with branch chain. So the the thing about beef protein, I want to remind everyone is it's not beef as in the the muscle. It's mainly, yeah, mainly a collagen. You can't turn beef into a protein powder. Yeah, it sounds like it comes from bones, hooves, ligaments. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And and, like and that's food. fine, right? That's fine. That's fine. You're increasing your amino acid, your your total protein intake. But if your goal is maximizing muscle growth, you're not getting enough of the essential amino acids that you need to promote muscle growth with a beef protein, because again, it's basically a collagen protein and the Got same it. with collagen, right? Sure. You could use a collagen protein, but remember it's not a complete protein. Yeah. And the benefit wouldn't be more muscle growth. It'd be more like joint health and nails and, you know, hair, uh, and skin. So if, if that's what your main goal is, right. I have plenty of women asking me when you're going to make a collagen protein. Um, <laughs> my don't, my own daughters, cause she's worried about her skin, sure. her hair, her hair and her nails, right. Not her muscle yeah. mass. So, so collagen protein is fine if you understand that it's not the best choice for maximizing muscle growth. There, what I recommend is a, you know, for most people, a, a, a whey and or a casein, preferably okay. a little bit of both because as, I, as I, we were talking about earlier, with the whey, you get a, the whey is very fast digesting and it, it almost shows up immediately in the bloodstream, the, the amino acids from whey. And so that creates a nice quick spike in muscle protein synthesis. Mm-hmm. So if post-workout, say you want to maximize that, and we can talk about the, the anabolic window as well, if you want to get into that and the debate over that. Um, but if you want to spike your muscle protein synthesis, that's why people recommend a whey protein right after working out because it gives you that quick spike um, but it's so quick that it's out of the, those amino acids are out of the bloodstream within about two to three hours. And so mm. what it does is it spikes muscle protein synthesis, but then muscle protein synthesis drops off. The casein protein digests a bit slower. So it's like a 
getting a slow trickle of those amino acids into your bloodstream. What that does is it maintains the muscle protein synthesis for longer. So if you have a combo protein that has whey mm. and casein, you get that quick spike from the whey. And then as it's sort of dropping off, the casein comes in and now it's extending the muscle protein synthesis. So anybody, my recommendation, and again, this is, you know, my opinion in, in, in my science, um, mm -hmm. I recommend getting a protein blend so that you're getting that fast and that slow digesting protein. Interesting. Is there, is there more fat and carbs than the casein protein typically, or is it kind of like an, uh, is it like there's whey protein concentrate, which has more fat and carbs, right? Yeah. Whey or protein, protein isolate, right. It doesn't get as filtered as whey protein isolate. So okay. as long as you're using isolates in the casein state, generally speaking, casein will have a little bit more carbs and, and fat unless it's, it's filtered out. Got it. Okay. So, you can so if, yeah, for, for example, my, uh, pro gym, protein powder yes. is a blend of whey and casein and there's less than a gram of lactose per serving okay yeah i'll have to check that out um i didn't know that i didn't know you had the the blend um so yeah, i'm I'll, assuming I'll send you some so you can try it out okay. i know you're, like you said you're lactose oh, yeah. intolerant and literally yeah. almost everyone i know tells me that same story tries it and they're like wow i've never been able to to have a milk protein nice. powder before so yeah yeah i'm happy to try that out so um, I'm assuming same thing with like amino acid supplementation. Is that something that's kind of like, Hey, if you're eating enough protein, you really don't need amino acid supplementation or are there some protocols where amino acid supplementation could be used. Uh, yeah. So definitely, you know, it's, it's, you know, and again, it's like, it's on the, it depends on the goal and it depends on like, how important is it to get that quarter inch on your biceps, right? You know, that, like, if you're that person that's like, yeah, you're like splitting hair. That yeah. extra eighth inch on my biceps, then, then sure. Like maybe taking like branch chain amino acids post-workout to get extra leucine in the blood, even though you're taking a protein shake would, would help to get that leucine to the muscle quicker, right? That's going to turn right. on, it's going to, activate mTOR that's going to turn on muscle protein synthesis quicker than if you were waiting for your protein shake to be broken down. Now, what's interesting about branch chain amino acids and leucine in particular, which is the real MVP post-workout yeah. at least. Yep. So with branch chains, what I remind people is I recommend it before workouts and after. Before workouts is for energy. The okay. branch chains are used as a fuel source during intense exercise and they bypass the liver. So typically when you when you consume a protein or amino acid, it goes to the liver and the liver decides, should I let this go to the bloodstream as an amino acid or do I need more carbs and I'll break it down and convert it into glycogen and, and glucose, mm -hmm. right? The liver yeah. does, the liver controls that. But with the branch chains, the liver gives it a pat, it goes, oh, go on. You need to get to the muscle. It's used directly. So before you work out, I recommend taking a dose of branch chains only because it's an energy source used by the muscle and sure. the valine. One of the other three is more important pre-workout because what valine does is it blocks the uptake of tryptophan in the brain. Hmm. And this is research that was done at university of Connecticut where in, in, in the lab uh, where I did my doctoral work. And yeah. what we, what, what we found was that when you take the valine, it blocks tryptophan uptake tryptophan, gets converted into serotonin, which is, you know, feel good hormone. But yeah. during the workout, you don't want to be flooded with serotonin. That's going to give you that <laughs> sluggish fatigue yeah. feeling. And so branch chains before a workout would help to prevent that, help that prevent that serotonin buildup, if you will. Post-workout is where leucine becomes the MVP if you're taking branch chains, because that's going to turn on muscle protein synthesis. And there's a study that showed that when they gave subjects either an equivalent dose of leucine is a free form amino acid as a, you know, a powder or a capsule or the same amount of leucine from a meal. Yeah. Like a, uh, like a steak or, or chicken. They, mm -hmm. they studied the leucine appearance in the blood. Now, not only did the free form leucine get into the blood quicker than the whole food as would be expected, but it was 140% higher than the whole food, meaning that, a good percentage of that leucine was never absorbed by the body. Mm. And so, yes. And so 
So I'm a firm believer in, 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 like I said, with, with the research again, none of the research is perfect. And so I rely a lot on anecdotal evidence that we see here. And luckily, you know, I work with so many individuals that we can see these data sets create. And when you do add the branch chain amino acids, even though you're already getting a protein shake, it can help. But again, how critical is it for you to gain that extra one or two? This isn't going to put on 40 pounds of muscle. You know what I mean? Sure. Is it going to yeah. help you gain maybe an extra pound or two or, or five in the long run? Sure. But so how critical is that? It, it depends on the person. Got it. Okay. Yeah, no, I appreciate you touching on that. I'm, 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 I'm listening to everything you're saying. I'm also, I, I'm on your website too. And I'm, I'm looking at some of these products on here. I'm very curious. Like for example, pre-workout, that's another one I want to dive into. Thank you for talking about supplementation with protein mm-hmm. and amino acids. Uh, pre-workout, there's so many that exist out there. You, someone that has a PhD, what, what works, what doesn't work, what's overhyped, <laughs> what's, you know, maybe talk about. Wise? Yes, ingredient wise. So, I, I, like I said, we talked about the branch chain amino acids and why you would want them before you work out. And again, I saw that in your do, pre-workout. It has nothing to do with muscle protein synthesis. It's okay. the fact that those amino acids are used as a fuel source directly by the muscle, right? Cool. So it's energy okay. and it's blocking that tryptophan uptake. Yeah. Which is going to prevent that serotonin flood that you can yep. get from the tryptophan uptake, which is going to give you okay. that lethargic fatigue feeling when you're working out. So that's where I like branch chain amino acids. Yeah. And so, other, okay. So I'm yep. sorry, go ahead. Keep going. <laughs> other, like, other, and again, we're talking about supplements here. As far as food, yeah. I would recommend a whole protein and, you know, something like a piece of fruit or other low glycemic carbohydrate, right? That's not going to okay. flood you uh, with glucose and then drop and and a crash you know, leave you yeah. crashing something more slower like an apple so so protein yeah. and a carb yeah right as your Most main likely. that's what i would focus on before you're even getting into any of these supplements okay amino acids. yes but then you if you about? really want to supercharge it right then you're talking mm-hmm. about i would go with a branch chain uh amino acid i would consider beta alanine mm-hmm. pre-workout and the reason there is um beta alanine buffers the, the acid, basically, if you will, it's really buffering hydrogen, uh, if we want to get into the biochemistry, but I don't think anyone watching is going to uh, <laughs> care about the details of the biochemistry, but it's basically helping to buffer the acidity that happens in a muscle, which causes fatigue, right? Once yeah. that acidity increases, that's you start feeling muscle pain and, and, and fatigue and, and beta alanine helps to prevent that. But it's, it's, it's also a, uh, neuro stimulator like caffeine more mild um mm-hmm. but it does give you a little bit of a boost there uh like caffeine does so i like that one as well pre-workout and and then caffeine in general one one of the things you know about caffeine is that if you take a good enough dose and we're talking 300 milligrams up three four hundred yeah. milligrams it can acutely increase your your muscle strength mm. Yeah, as well I, as that's, that's noticeable <laughs> yeah, and, and it blunts muscle pain as well there's actually a study where they gave subjects either ibuprofen while they were working out or caffeine really? and the perceived pain that they were feeling was less with the caffeine than it was with the ibuprofen wow I've, i would not have thought that i did not know that that's really interesting yeah so it can help study. you sort of like you know push yourself push harder past that yeah okay that's interesting stuff. Yeah. I, um, I noticed you had, and then you have three different types of pre-workouts, uh, on your website. I'm assuming they're different formulas or maybe. Yeah. Different, yeah. Exactly. I mean, I formulas, okay. different price points. You know, there's the regular pre-gym. There's then a stim free one that doesn't have any caffeine in it. Okay. And then we have sort of the supercharged pre-workout, which has not just caffeine, but it also has dynamine hmm. and, and teacrine in it which are similar, they're similar to, um, caffeine, but they have different half-lives than caffeine. And so, you know, you get more of a, uh, a boost and then it also has more nitrates. Okay. Almost 900 milligrams of nitrates in there for, for, you know, blood flow, flow. muscle pump. Yeah. Cool. 
I, I love that. I, I appreciate you talking about this stuff because this is kind of a lot of the questions that my clients ask me because, you know, supplements are a thing. They are a thing, especially in the society we live in that's fast paced, you know, convenience, you know, not everyone has time to like meal prep all the time and, you know, having supplements that can kind of give you that edge. I think there is a, a time and place for, for things like this. So I appreciate you talking about that. But also I love what you said about, Hey, at the end of the day, like none of that stuff matters. If one, you don't have like your mindset in check, uh, you're yeah, eating whole foods. Yeah, sleep, you're, you're exactly. Stress yeah. management. Yes. <laughs> the basics. <laughs> and, and a good exercise program. Yep, exactly. And so with you having kids, I'm very curious to know about this. Like, is it, is nutrition, health, exercise, is, is that something you, being an industry you're in? And the reason I ask, cause I'm, I'm a dad too. Like, do you kind of like push that onto them? Like, Hey, this is what will help you. And then if so, do they ever push back and be like, I don't want to listen to you? Um, or do you kind of just let them do their own thing and come to you with questions? I'm very curious to know your journey. About I, like, I let them do their own thing. You know, okay. I'm very cautious. I, the last thing you want to do is create a, you know, an eating disorder in a child yes. because you're telling yeah. them, you know, that's not healthy. And like I said, I'm about, I, I'm about enjoying life and making the things that we enjoy in life work, you know, versus yeah. being a food Nazi. Like you can't have any sugar, you can't have any, you know, high fructose corn syrup. Obviously you want to limit that. Right. Sure. Um, you, you know, you, you can't eat things like donuts. You can never have pizza. You can't have French fries cause it's carbs and fat. You know, yeah. I, I'm a person that wants to enjoy even alcohol, you know, I, yeah. I, Again, am I saying you should go binge drinking every weekend? Should <laughs> no, but can you can you can you make it through a fitness journey? Can you be your healthiest person while you enjoy alcohol occasionally? Yes, yes, yeah. I, I believe so. Uh, right, obviously, sure. You, you uh, alcohol does this, it does that. But again, at the end of the day, it it's about enjoying the the it's about enjoying life. So with my kids, yeah. it's never about it's not even about being healthy. Certainly it's never about body. You're going to get fat if you eat too many donuts. You know what I mean? It's not, there's never, I never, I never teach my kids anything about body type, mm. nor do I even teach them. Obviously we, we talk about more health, but even that I try to teach them just balance because you know, I don't want them to create these, you know, weird associations with foods and, you know, and, and, and at worst create a, a, a eating disorder. And, and I, I see that a lot with other people in this industry with their children. It's just like, oh, no, we only eat, you know, raw food or we only, you know, we eat keto in this house, even my 10 year old. And it's just like, yeah, you know, like, let, let the kid <laughs> let the kids sort of find their own way and yeah. you know, putting these limits on what they're eating just as long as they're healthy and enjoying life in general is more. I, I, about. I love that. Uh, I love that you talked about that because for me, that's so important. You know, I personally have, you know, I grew up in a very strict religion till like my mid thirties and I, you know, in my mid thirties deconstructed that kind of, that religion and the hold it had on me. And I see now like, Oh, I was doing the same thing with nutrition. And I think yep, a lot of yep. people make nutrition, their religion, and they push yes. that on their kids. Like this food's good. This food's bad. If you eat this food, you're good. If you eat this food, yes. you're bad. And then they grow up with that kind of stigma. And then they're like, Oh, well, I'm a bad person or they're sneaking it when I'm not yeah. around or they're like escaping through food and you kind of create that for them. And so I, I love that you talk about that. I've done the same approach where I just let go of control and like, yeah, sure. Like, I try and get them to eat healthy, but at the same time, it's not like, Hey, you need to eat this way. Otherwise you're, you're going to get kicked out of the house. Like I, right. I definitely don't want that to happen. And so I've noticed my oldest daughter, she starts to come to me and ask questions because I don't push it on her anymore. Yep. And then I'll be there to answer questions like, Hey, here's what I think is, is, you know, can work, but I never make it about body image, especially having, you know, daughters or about what their the looks example. are. You're setting the yeah. example for them, you know, without 100%. saying anything, you know? And I love that you brought up alcohol. Like, yes, we know alcohol is a, a poison. It's a toxin to your body. Sure. It's not healthy in any way, shape, or form. But at the same time, there's a psychological benefit to, like, drinking, having yes, a drink. Having a drink. My God. Can you imagine, yeah. you know, if you could never, if somebody who just, you know, you 
you've been drinking alcohol most of your life and now you're 50 years old and your trainer tells you you can never have a drink again like that's yeah. not gonna work you know what i mean it doesn't yeah. work you can't erase 50 years obviously he wasn't drinking for 50 years but you can't do you know what i'm saying there's there's some things you just can't erase um yeah. because they've the pattern has been there for so long and so instead of trying to erase it yeah my goal is to allow them to work with it you know yeah 100 percent. and i think one of the keys is building self-awareness like it, it, building that self-awareness in them of like okay well why why do you want to drink is it is it to have a a, a drink with a buddy and celebrate something like watch a game or is it you're lonely you're sad you're depressed it's midnight and you're up drinking by yourself those are yeah. two different situations. You're, exactly. you're, you're drinking the alcohol. You're still drinking the same substance, but the, the intention is different. Yes. And so I think self-awareness is super important to help other people understand, okay, this is why I do what I do. Do I want to keep doing that? Yes. Or maybe there's times where I'm like, okay, yeah, I can see myself. I'm using this as a, an escape. Or maybe this time, like, no, I really want to enjoy this memory with my buddies or my family. And those are, I think that's yes. up to and, the and, individual. And the same side. thing, not even with alcohol, with like a donut. It's like, yes. are you emotionally <laughs> eating a, you know, a 12 pack of donuts at midnight? Yeah. Or are, or is it the thing that your family does every Sunday? Yes. You know what I mean? And, you know, like you all split the, and you each try, you know, like that's completely yeah. different. <laughs> You know, I doubt I don't want to take away from you. If if you're eating a dozen donuts at midnight because you're, you know, it's emotional eating, then let's talk. You know? Yeah, 100%. That I'd like to change, you know. Amen. Well, uh, Dr. Jim, I really appreciate you coming on, man. We'll have to have a part two because I Definitely, didn't get to any questions. <laughs> Definitely. But I appreciate you coming on. Uh, where can people find you, connect with you? Where do you want to send people to? Your website? And your Instagram. Yeah, you so you know, social media, it's Jim Stepani. Okay. We'll put a link to that in the show notes. Uh really appreciate you coming on and your your knowledge and you know, you being in this game for so long. Like, man, I just am so grateful that you came on and, and you know, you probably have out so many people in this world. You've helped out so many people in this world. So keep doing what you're doing and uh love that you're a dad as well. Um so yeah, man, I really appreciate you coming on. Oh, uh, well, I, I, I really appreciate being invited. And uh, like, like you said, you've been doing this a long time as well. So keep it up. Keep the great work going. Thanks, man. Yeah. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks All again. Right. We'll talk to you soon. Go!